In this video, I'm going to go over bump mapping and how you can use it in your materials. Bump mapping is a way of adding more detail to your objects through your materials without having to model any of this in. It's a great way to add details such as bumps or dimples, cracks, and to give the surface of your objects some sort of texture. Like if you look at the sidewalk, sidewalk isn't smooth, it's filled with bumps and crevices. And uh, bump mapping is a great way of being able to achieve that type of look. So here I have two spheres. I'm going to apply a thong on each of these. And on this first one, I'm going to go to the thong, and I'm going to apply a fractal to the color port of this sphere. So let's come in and select our fractal. Now we're not seeing anything in the viewport, so let's make sure we go turn on hardware texturing. And I'm going to change my renderer to viewport 2 so we can get much better feedback. So here, this is what it looks like uh, with the fractal in the color port of our shader. And you can see that our sphere still looks smooth and we just have a noisy color pattern on top of our uh, smooth sphere. But what we can do is use a fractal as a bump map. And instead of having our sphere look smooth, all of these color variations will create a disturbance on the surface of our object. So let's go into this sphere's material, the Fong 2. And next to bump mapping, let's select the Create Texture node. And we'll grab the same fractal. Now you can see what the bump map does. It's the exact same fractal, but when it comes, goes through the bump map channel, it um, makes it look like the surface of the sphere is indented and perturbed. Um, after creating a bump map, we get this bump map uh, node, and um, we have a value that we can adjust for the bump depth. This is going to um, determine how intense our bump is on our object. So if I bring this down to 0.1, you can see we get a very, very subtle bumpy effect on our sphere. And if I crank this up to 3, you can see we get a much, much more severe look. Now, one thing to notice with a bump map, actually, uh, before I move ahead, let's just do a render so you can see how it looks. What's nice when using bump maps is um, you can see on this sphere how we have, we still have a circular highlight hitting our sphere. With a bump map, uh, it really breaks it up, and the way the light hits our object. It, it, there's a much a higher degree of variation. There's very, very few things in life that are actually this smooth. So adding some sort of bump onto most of our objects will probably be a good way to achieve a level of realism without having to model all of these things in there. With a bump map, you can see that uh, it looks like the surface of our object has been modified, has been moved, but it really isn't. This is just a texture and lighting trick. If you look at the silhouette of our sphere, it still is perfectly round. So even if I crank this thing up to five, you still see that uh, we still maintain the shape of our sphere. The shape is not actually changing, it's just a lighting and rendering trick. There is another way of actually moving your surface of your object, and that is called displacement, but we won't be getting into that in this lesson. So let's bring this down. Let's actually go into the hypershade, just so you can see what the bump looks like when we graph the network. So you see we have our material. This is the thong material node. And whenever you create a bump node, it automatically creates this bump. And then your texture gets connected to the bump. And 
we have our standard 2D placement texture that is always attached with our texture node. And this is bump mapping.